epithet. He says something, you know, outrageous that he shouldn't say. Immediately, he is, you know, thrown out of the society. He's told, you have to make it up to the LGBT community. And the way you have to do it is that you have to become the coach to the shiny shrimps, who are a gay men's water polo team who are going to, to take place in the gay games uh, in Croatia. Of course, initially, he's not thrilled by this, but inevitably, <laughs> as you will know from the trailer, everything starts to build towards him when, when they all start to be working as a team. Here's a clip. Are you the French water polo team? Uh, yes, well, they're correct. You're late, Shani Shrimps. Yes, you know, but with the bus and Céline Dion and the dispute and the new Follow love. me now. <laughs> yes, I found this f***ing Shani Shrimps. <laughs> Two minutes, copy that. J'ai l'impression d'être Beyoncé au Stade de France. sense of the film from that. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I think it's, it, it's charming and funny. It is absolutely full of cliches and stereotypes. There's nothing surprising about the narrative whatsoever. You can tell from the first 10 minutes where it's going to go. You were referring to yourself swimming with men recently. The yes. best way of describing this is like swimming with men crossed with Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. The only thing I'd say is you'd have to be pretty hard-hearted not to chuckle, not to be charmed by it, because its heart is solidly in the right place. And actually, I think it is, in a kind of slightly clumsy, cliche way, it is rather a charming film. I mean, I, you know, I I enjoyed it. I don't think it's groundbreaking in any way at all, but it is good fun. Yeah. OK, well, good fun. There's, yeah. there's a lot to be said for good fun in, in today's world. Uh, let's talk about Best Out. Yes. OK, so... Which is just remarkable. Mark Jenkins' film, Bait. So Mark Jenkins is a Cornish filmmaker who's made this film about a fishing village in Cornwall in which the old fishing cottage has been sold to an uh, incoming family who are using it as a sort of tourist cottage. It's about the battle between past, present and future. It is shot on clockwork cameras with 16 mil black and white film that Mark Jenkins developed himself in his studio in Newlyn. It is, I think, a genuine modern masterpiece. I think it's one of the defining British films of the decade. And the best thing about it is this. It's done so well in its opening week that they have expanded the number of cinemas that it's playing in. I think they've gone to twice the number of screens it was playing in in the first week because the response to it has been great. This is not just a film that critics are saying this is really important. Audiences are finding it. Audiences are, are really loving it. You've seen it, right? Well, and, and what I am struck by is... I think about it every day since I've seen it, yeah. uh, which doesn't mean I love every single thing about it, but I think it's extremely clever. Um, and I was really struck by the sound as well. Yeah. There's something, and I, I'm afraid I don't necessarily always notice sound, and there's something really unusual in a, in a good way about that. Really, really haunting imagery, and the way in which the sound kind of bubbles up from the ground is really, really impressive. It kind of gives you the sense that you're watching something that's completely organic, that's utterly you know, in and of the place that it's set in. I really, really And I felt it. you could tell he was so passionate about it, and I just feel in some way that comes through. Absolutely, entirely. absolutely. It's a, it's, it's a passion project, it's a, it's a labour of love, and it's really wonderful. Mm, fantastic. Um, quick thought about uh, what else is around, if anyone wants to stay in this weekend. Uh, Claire Denis' High Life, which is a really interesting science fiction film starring Robert Pattinson, which I think is it's very much like um, a film like Solaris. It's a film which goes into outer space, but it's really about inner space. It's about what's happening within rather than what's happening without. It's very enigmatic, it's very strange, and uh, I think it's something that you really have to, you have to give yourself over to it, but it's really worth doing, and I think you'd really enjoy it. Okay. And Pattinson is brilliant. <laughs> all right, really, really interesting week. Thanks very much. Thank you. Good to see you, Mark. Thank you very much indeed, and that is all for this week. Enjoy your cinema going, whatever you decide to go and see. See you next time, bye-bye. A Cornish film, Bait, has been nominated for two BAFTAs. The nominations for Outstanding British Film. 1917, Bait. The film is also nominated in the Outstanding Debut by British Director, Writer or Producer category. Bait was shot in black and white in Charlestown and West Penwith. It charts the tensions in a Cornish fishing village between locals and tourists. 
and on our website this lunchtime. Find an introduction to the Cornish hopeful who is entering the Love Island Villa ahead of the new series starting this Sunday. Ollie Williams is the heir to the Lanhydrock estate in Bodmin. And white film shot on location in Cornwall is up against some of this year's biggest blockbusters after receiving two BAFTA nominations. Yes, Bait is listed for Outstanding British Film alongside the Elton John story Rocket Man and First World War film 1917. Mark Jenkin, the writer and director of Bait, is also nominated for Outstanding Debut. We'll talk to him in just a moment. First, though, here's a brief look at the film. You live in this community. Oh. The community. I saw a ghost from my past today. As I approached, they dwindled away. Losing your temper isn't going to help. I haven't lost my temper yet. Well, the writer and director of Bait is Mark Jenkin, and he joins us from his studio in Newlyn. Many congratulations on the nominations. How did you find out? I was I was at home. It was it was announced at seven thirty in the morning. So I was watching the stream on um, on Twitter actually, like everybody else. And um, I was making a cup of coffee and uh, quietly listening because my partner was asleep in bed. And uh, yeah, didn't stay quiet for very long. <laughs> I bet it's a tremendous accolade. And when you look at the the other nominees, for instance, Best British Film in Rocket Man, which is doing incredibly well, and nineteen seventeen. That Sam Mendes hit as well. How does it feel to be in the same category as those films? Fantastic, speechless, really. Um, yeah, I mean that 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 was that's the the real surprise that nomination. I think um, a lot a lot of people had had said to me, you know, that they thought it might get that nomination, but I couldn't allow myself to really think that we would get that one. So, yeah, spectacular. I mean, it stands out in so many ways, not least because of the way it was filmed and, of course, the, the budget that you must have had, which would be minute compared to the other films you're up against. Tell us a bit about that technique and why you chose the, the black-and-white approach and the old film camera and the old film stock to make the film. Um, it, it wasn't really a conscious choice for this film particularly. It's just that it's the way I work, so I like working with old cameras. I like keeping the form as simple as possible. And, and for me, shooting on 16mm film, shooting on simple clockwork cameras, it's really it's a, it's a bit of a no-brainer for me. And we shouldn't underestimate how much of a labour of love this has been for you because, I mean, you're talking to us from your studio there in Newlyn, and I think that's where you had hours and hours of film that you processed. I mean, this wasn't a simple task making this film, was it? No, no, not at all. And it's, it's quite surreal now talking to you um, on, on the local news from the very spot where I spent hours and hours a couple of winters ago hand processing the film frame by frame thinking what am I doing with my life well that hard work is getting the recognition it deserves we wish you every success at the BAFTAs congratulations on the nominations and thank you very much for joining us thanks Justin thanks a lot lovely lovely isn't it yeah good luck to him now Christmas may be uh, good luck to them. They sounded great, didn't they? Yes, yeah, as you say, good luck to them. But from singing stars of the future now to movie stars of the present in today's BAFTA nominations, because it's already being talked about as one of the best Cornish films of all time, and today Bait was, uh, was nominated for two BAFTAs. The film was shot in black and white in Charlestown and West Penwith. It charts the tensions in a Cornish fishing village between locals and tourists. Steve Hardy has today been speaking with one of its stars. What's wrong? Not much. It's been a hit with cinema audiences. Now the Cornish-made film Bait has caught the attention of film critics. It's been nominated for two major awards. The, old ring bolt. the film was mainly shot here in Charlestown and is supposed to represent a typical Cornish fishing community like Newlyn. It deals with the tensions between the fishing industry and tourism and features two brothers, one who mourns the decline of the fishing industry and one who embraces tourism and the money it brings in. One of those brothers, the fisherman, is played by Cornish comedian and actor Edward Rowe, better known as Kerno King. Amazing, absolutely delighted to be part of such a film that's been so widely loved and wide, widely respected. It's absolutely amazing. When you were filming, did you expect to get this kind of acclamation? No, no, not at all. The film has been nominated in two categories for the BAFTA Film Awards, 
one of them outstanding British film. In one of the categories, you're up against 1917 and Rocketman. Yeah. You know, I wish them all the best, but they're up against a tough film in Bay. I tell you that from nothing. The other category is outstanding debut by a British writer, director or producer. The film was directed by Newlyn-based Mark Jenkin. What I'm really worried about, and what, something that's more binary, I think, is whether I've represented Cornish, the Cornish fishing community accurately. So that's the bit I'm a little bit anxious about. Edward says Mark has definitely achieved that. He presents that argument really fairly. Um, I think you do ultimately side with the, the people in Cornwall and you know understand why they feel the way they do, but he presents it in a way that's not, not aggressive, but ultimately it's really truthful. The nominations for Outstanding British Film. 1917. Bait. The For awards summer. ceremony is in early Rocket February. Man. You looking forward to the ceremony? Yeah. You're going? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, would have, I would really hope so. Bait is still playing in cinemas around the country and on streaming services later this month. Steve Hardy, ITV News. I've got my fingers crossed for them. Yeah, tough competition, though. Uh, among the categories, 1917 is in the Outstanding British Film Category 2. That's meant to be particularly good um, and did well at the Golden Globes, as well as Rocketman, of course, which did very well in the Yeah, cinemas. we've just been looking this up, haven't we? Esteemed company, I think yes. we'd say. And you but can find out more about Bait, as well as plenty more news from the region on our website, including an introduction to the Cornish hopeful who is entering the Love Island Villa ahead of the new series starting this Sunday. Ollie Williams is the heir to the land Hydrock estate in Bodmin. He says his best chat-up line is to say he owns Polzeth Beach in North Cornwall. Who doesn't? <laughs> As you do. <laughs> My next-door neighbours are famously uh, Prince Charles and Camilla. I definitely would describe myself as wealthy, but don't like to brag about it. I fall fast and I fall hard when it comes to love. I can get a bit soppy um, <laughs> and, and the love word can come out a bit too prematurely on that. I'm going to reserve well. judgment. Well, yeah, reserve but he didn't say love quite one. early. <laughs> you might do fairly well. But the weather, of course, Charlie is here now. Amazing that its director, Greta Gerwig, did not make the shortlist. Britain's premier film awards. New nominees from the latest movies, but a familiar story. Of the 20 acting nominations across four categories, all are white. I'm in the movie. You're in this? That's me. Actress Margot Robbie, who stars in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Bombshell, takes up two of the places in the supporting actress category. I love my country. It's a war I hate. There's a double nod too for Scarlett Johansson for her roles in Jojo Rabbit and Marriage Story. You don't like it? Joker leads the nominations with 11. <laughs> BAFTA, like the Oscars, has taken steps to improve the diversity of their thousands of voters and say the issues go deep into the industry itself, though the absence of any women in the Best Director category could be down to timing. It's very disappointing. Uh, the problem is BAFTA doesn't actually control who, who um, gets hired to do what and BAFTA doesn't, uh, you know, you can't force the voting. I think the directing category was unbelievably strong competition this year and that's really what's gone on there. Our industries are still seen as very hard to get into, so how do we make sure that the door isn't just open, it's wide open? Well, it sounds so crass. Despite being regarded as a strong year for acclaimed female-led films like Greta Gerwig's Little Women, it is the seventh year. There there are no women up for Best Director. We should make friends with him. The British star of this new film, Charlie's Angels, is surprised. No, I'm Jane. Oh. Ella Belinska today read out the nominations alongside fellow Brit Asa Butterfield. It's definitely a surprise. One thing that is, is very um, promising, though, is that in the other categories, they've been represented. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You're moving big here. Yeah. The rising star yeah. category chosen by Anyone BAFTA, asks, not its voting yeah, members, does have yeah. diversity. So Blue Stories' mind. Michael Ward making the list. Oh, my guy. Trust me. He's the lead actor and he's the rising, one of the um, rising star nominees. That's a black actor that has been Yeah, nominated. Michael Ward. And... Acquia Jamfi runs an organisation supporting black creative talent. It's the voters, she says, so that need to do better. It's the members that need to do due diligence and really check their biases and, and think about are they actually committing to the job at hand? Are they really being fair with their voting? Next week, it's the turn of the Oscars to announce their nominations. Critics are hoping that list may look a little different. Nina Nanar, News at 10.
Some sport now, and England cricket fans have a test victory to... Good evening. of films Joker the Irishman and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood will be on the red carpet for tonight's BAFTAs in London Joker leads the field with 11 nominations but it's the World War One epic 1917 that's tipped to win best film well our arts editor Will Gompertz is at the Royal Albert Hall for us this evening Will hello Clive good evening yeah, just down there's Al Pacino making his way up the red carpet into the Albert Hall for tonight's show where all the stars enter it with sort of a cloud of controversy hanging over them and these awards because of the lack of diversity in the nominations. It might well get mentioned later, but ultimately it's going to be about the winners and losers. So with that in mind, here's a brief look at some of the main runners and writers. She told me I had a purpose. To bring laughter and joy to the world. Joaquin Phoenix isn't funny but he is the Joker. <laughs> in Todd Phillips' dark Batman origin story, which leads the BAFTAs pack with 11 nominations. 